This is the Cambridge English First listening test. Test six. I'm going to give you the instructions for this test. I shall introduce each part of the test and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will hear each piece twice. Remember, while you are listening, write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper. And look at part one. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer A, B, or C. Question one. You hear a psychologist talking about green spaces in cities. I'd like to start my talk today about green spaces and cities by acknowledging the fact that more and more governments are coming to accept that they are a vital element of a healthy society. Whether you're an adult, a teenager, or a young child, parks play a crucial role in ensuring our well-being. Yet too few of us really understand that, and as a society, we tend not to make enough use of the ones we already have. So when it comes to planning decisions, there just isn't enough pressure on local authorities to incorporate them in the future development of our cities. The consequences are potentially very serious. I'd like to start my talk today about green spaces and cities by acknowledging the fact that more and more governments are coming to accept that they are a vital element of a healthy society. Whether you're an adult, a teenager, or a young child, parks play a crucial role in ensuring our well-being. Yet too few of us really understand that, and as a society, we tend not to make enough use of the ones we already have. So when it comes to planning decisions, there just isn't enough pressure on local authorities to incorporate them in the future development of our cities. The consequences are potentially very serious. Question two. You hear part of an interview with a singer. I play a lot of tennis because staying in good physical shape is absolutely vital if you're a singer or a musician. When I'm playing tennis, I always think how much it has in common with singing. For example, playing tennis, you learn how to concentrate, develop self-control, and of course, how to pace your breath and maximize the use of your energy. Before I have a big concert in the evening, I'll often have a quick game of tennis just to relax. It can't be too energetic, though, or I wouldn't be able to give a good performance. I play a lot of tennis because staying in good physical shape is absolutely vital if you're a singer or a musician. When I'm playing tennis, I always think how much it has in common with singing. For example, playing tennis, you learn how to concentrate, develop self-control, and of course, how to pace your breath and maximize the use of your energy. Before I have a big concert in the evening, I'll often have a quick game of tennis just to relax. It can't be too energetic, though, or I wouldn't be able to give a good performance. Question three. You hear an actor talking about how she met her husband. Well, Johnny, my husband, happened to hear me being interviewed on the radio. And thought I'd be good for the part of the heroine in a play he was about to appear in, so he persuaded the director to send me the script. 
I liked it. We met on stage at the rehearsals, fell in love, and the rest is history. I'd seen Johnny perform before and admired his work, but I didn't accept the part just because he was in it. I did know he was a nice person, though, because a friend of mine had sat next to him at a film premiere and had told me about him. Well, Johnny, my husband, happened to hear me being interviewed on the radio and thought I'd be good for the part of the heroine in a play he was about to appear in. So he persuaded the director to send me the script. I liked it. We met on stage at the rehearsals, fell in love, and the rest is history. I'd seen Johnny perform before and admired his work, but I didn't accept the part just because he was in it. I did know he was a nice person, though, because a friend of mine had sat next to him at a film premiere and had told me about him. Question 4. You hear two people talking about a bus service. Do you ever use the bus between Borough Bridge and Malton? No. Is it any good? Could be worse, I suppose. But I can't say it's cheap. You can save a bit by buying a season ticket, but not actually that much. Really? Well, what it does have in its favor is that it's very rarely late. Although, it's a shame it only runs every three quarters of an hour. I'll stick to my motorbike, then. You can't read your book on that, though, can you? No, true. But I like to get to places quickly. Do you ever use the bus between Borough Bridge and Malton? No. Is it any good? Could be worse, I suppose. But I can't say it's cheap. You can save a bit by buying a season ticket, but not actually that much. Really? Well, what it does have in its favor is that it's very rarely late. Although, it's a shame it only runs every three quarters of an hour. I'll stick to my motorbike, then. You can't read your book on that, though, can you? No, true. But I like to get to places quickly. Question 5. You hear a retired ballerina comparing dancers today with dancers in the past. Nowadays, ballet is much more acrobatic than in the past. The audience wants to see internationally famous dancers doing lots of jumps and legs going remarkably high. It's a bit more like a circus now, and the depth of feeling that we tried to convey in the past isn't always there in modern ballet. You only find it in one or two dancers. I'd love to see less focus on technique. I usually come away from watching a ballet feeling impressed with what I've seen, but it hasn't moved me. Nowadays, ballet is much more acrobatic than in the past. The audience wants to see internationally famous dancers doing lots of jumps and legs going remarkably high. It's a bit more like a circus now, and the depth of feeling that we tried to convey in the past isn't always there in modern ballet. You only find it in one or two dancers. I'd love to see less focus on technique. I usually come away from watching a ballet feeling impressed with what I've seen, but it hasn't moved me. Question 6. You hear a chef talking about making a TV series. I was approached to do a TV cookery series where I had to compete against another chef every week. Never having met him before, I was a bit apprehensive about working with him. But we got on like a house on fire. It's rare for me to spend 10 hours a day with someone for five weeks and like them more by the end of it than I did at the beginning. Halfway through filming, the producer had to ring me up and ask if we could be less friendly with one another on camera because it was supposed to be a competition. I was approached to do a TV cookery series where I had to compete against another chef every week. 
Never having met him before, I was a bit apprehensive about working with him, but we got on like a house on fire. It's rare for me to spend 10 hours a day with someone for five weeks and like them more by the end of it than I did at the beginning. Halfway through filming, the producer had to ring me up and ask if we could be less friendly with one another on camera because it was supposed to be a competition. Question 7 You hear two friends talking about an art course. So, are you enjoying the art course? I am, I think. <laughs> I mean, what we're actually learning about is interesting. What inspired the 19th century French painters and that sort of thing. I feel I've heard it all before. I'd hope the teacher would tell us more about their actual techniques. But at least there aren't too many of us on the course. That certainly helps when it comes to group discussions and stuff. And the teacher's amazing, don't you think? He certainly thinks he is. I'm not convinced. I just don't feel very motivated at the moment, to be honest. So, are you enjoying the art course? I am, I think. <laughs> I mean, what we're actually learning about is interesting. What inspired the 19th century French painters and that sort of thing. I feel I've heard it all before. I'd hope the teacher would tell us more about their actual techniques. But at least there aren't too many of us on the course. That certainly helps when it comes to group discussions and stuff. And the teacher's amazing, don't you think? He certainly thinks he is. I'm not convinced. I just don't feel very motivated at the moment, to be honest. Question 8. You hear a swimmer talking about a competition she took part in. I had such a good time at the championships, better than I expected. The atmosphere was incredible with everyone cheering. I didn't expect so many people to turn up to the event, though I don't suppose they were there to see me. I hadn't been too happy with my performance in the previous competition, so to turn things round like that was very satisfying. The pressure started to get to me at one point, but I had a talk with myself and got things into perspective. I must work on my nerves before the next big event, but I can't wait to get back in the pool and start training for it. I had such a good time at the championships, better than I expected. The atmosphere was incredible with everyone cheering. I didn't expect so many people to turn up to the event, though I don't suppose they were there to see me. I hadn't been too happy with my performance in the previous competition, so to turn things round like that was very satisfying. The pressure started to get to me at one point, but I had a talk with myself and got things into perspective. I must work on my nerves before the next big event, but I can't wait to get back in the pool and start training for it. That is the end of part one.